Hello everyone. This is my redub of the Soul Calibur 3. I had to redub it because there was echoing sounds going out through that the entire stream and it got really bad particularly for this part. I mean horribly. I, it was hard for me to listen through this for editing. I don't know how you guys survived. But for this first part I will be doing Keelik and uh, going through his storyline. Meanwhile, I'm explaining to the audience that I don't want to go left to right because that would mean doing Taki and Mitsurugi right after the other, and they're very easy to get into the maze. Rather hilarious thinking of what's going to happen later anyway. But you guys enjoy while I try my best to commentate over what happened while also making things a little bit harder on myself. I'm lifting weights this whole damn time. <laughs> I miss my two day I miss two days of weightlifting. I've got to get my weights in, okay? I doubt I'm gonna lift this entire playthrough, but who knows? I'll probably just stop once he's chosen the character. Okay, yeah, that's good enough for now. Oh, that hurt like hell. I might just do one at a time during this thing. Anyway. Keelik is a fun character designed mostly for long range attacks. And he was one of the earliest ones I got the hang of in the early games. The first one. Most of the time I liked playing Siegfried because when I was young it was Big Bashy Blade. Awesome character. But eventually, Keelik got my liking. I tried him out in Soul Calibur, I, yeah, Soul Calibur 1. I didn't play Soul Edge until after Soul Calibur 1. Mostly because there was, ar there was an arcade in my city that had Soul Calibur 1 available right away, long before I knew about Soul Edge. I managed to eventually get Soul Edge and play that one too. But yeah, Keelik was like the second or third character I started up with when I started liking the other characters outside of Siegfried. Ivy was the th next one after that. Oof, that. I like them all, and what I'm doing right now is petting the cat right now. Seriously, she she loved she was bugging me throughout that entire stream. I really need to get a better camera view because that looks just horrible. Also, I don't know what was happening that day. I kept sneezing after I got done with the Mortal Kombat stream. Anytime you see me going around with like one controller while I'm playing games, it's because my cat's in my lap and wants my attention. And I can't get the camera down for you guys can always see her because it's a it's a very short wire. Anyway, for the first battle it's Ta I mean, Tom Lynn. I always say her name wrong. Really up front really close fighter that if you let get close can really beat the hell out of you luckily I'm fighting her with the biggest range character in the game so I can literally destroy her so easily I got pretty good of her but not until like the later half of two I don't play her as much as I used to, though, nowadays. Nowadays, it's mostly Raphael, Keelik, maybe occasionally the uh, new characters they'll introduce. I love giving those a try. I'm not like other fans that completely ignore their existence. No, I absolutely love when they give new characters a try. Particularly 2B, 
is just a chaotic, fun mess. I'll choose her purely if I don't want any difficulty at all, and just random button press, because it's easy to get a kill with her. For some reason, on five, I'm mean, sorry, six, Soul Calibur six, the computer can't keep up with the buttons of uh, B, I mean, of 2B. Same thing with, uh, with that, uh, as well, I think his name is, as well, the villain. So if you really want to break six, choose those two characters. As for other specialty characters, I like, uh, hmm. I, I loved Lizard Man in two and in four because I could alter his costume pretty good. See, you can see her cat ear sticking up. She's just petting me for, bugging me for attention. I landed on Ostenberg. This is me assuming, I mean, what's going on through my head right now, if I remember correctly, is that I assumed I'd get Tira almost instantaneously. Apparently, I don't, which kind of annoys me even now. I'm also letting the viewers obviously read the comments. No, this is actually not directly the stream itself. This is the edited version of the stream. Yes, I did manage to edit this thing before my ears burst in pain. It was mostly on mute, and I had to go by voice cues of the friggin' editing machine, but I got it through. Now, I know the name says Berserker. Fans of Soul Calibur 2 might be very confused here. It's like, no, it's not actually the same Berserker from 2. Not even close. What, this is meant to be along with any other knights you find in Ostrenburg, are meant to be references to the, what's it called, uh, the, the wolf kingdom that uh, Hilda serves in 4. You don't get her appearance in 3, but you get like subtle references to her kingdom, okay? Hence the reason you see occasionally knights in Ostrenburg. Six better explains it by saying that she was actively moving during 3, and actively fighting forces in Ostrenburg herself. Anyway, we go next place to the clock tower. This one goes a little bit better. We actually get a cutscene for this one. I actually end up perfecting it. Mostly because I actually can see the button pressing. I'll let you guys read the thing. Playing Keelik also makes it very easy to notice how buggy this game can be. I mean, obviously you can notice how buggy it can be when you play Ivy, too, for obvious reasons, as I named a part after that joke. But no, with Keelik, you obviously notice the staff will actively go through a character. It doesn't always present the bottom of the weapon as part of the actual model. So weapons like the staff and such can sometimes go right through your character. Particularly during cutscenes. That's only just one of the bugginesses of this game. I've already said in previous parts that the boob physics is just hilariously bad. In fact, I think another moment happens in the next part of the video. <laughs> Not during the Keelik run. No, no, no. I think it's during the Chronicles run. I'll have to remind myself when I get there. It's just hilariously bad sometimes. It's not a bad game. It's a good game. Just don't play it around your parents. What am I saying? I doubt I have any children on this stream. Dang. I doubt I have any children for YouTube watching my stuff. I curse a lot. I... I go fucking ballistic with my, my language, dang it. 
Thank goodness there's no freaking A rating on YouTube, dang it, because I'm pretty sure I unlocked it purely in words alone. And repeating words. Another one of my weaknesses. hilarious in context that I run back into Young Sung again considering how badly he kicked my ass in the last part I mean last arcade round with Zoslam L dang it. He it Young Sung can juggle people juggle people so friggin' easily. And again this context is after I've kicked his girlfriend's ass. Yes, the games heavily ship him and Tamlin. To an agonizingly painful degree that he shipped them so freaking hard. There's a few shippings in this, I and mean, actually on this path too with Keelix, as we'll see later. Most fans of any resemblance to Soul Calibur should know the massive relationship between Keelix and shang -Hua. Anyway, I decided to test out the getting watched part. Remember about what I told you last time, is that all you got to do really here is wait, and the secret opponent will fight you. If it's a bonus character, you can unlock them. However, I don't get a bonus character this time. I get a freaking challenge mode. In which I get a character that can't be unlocked, but you still have to defeat under hard difficulties. The hard difficulties here being, he cannot... Uh, let me, sorry. Let me rephrase that. He is immune to, da I mean, uh, to uh, physical damage. You can hurt him. You still lose his life, it's just he won't be affected by it. Watch. See, I hit him. It didn't do a darn thing to him. I even do a few heavy slams on him. He's like, eh, don't care. See? Had this been a normal fighter right there, that attack of his wouldn't have connected because I hit first. In fact, our blades would have more likely clashed into each other. And neither would be hit. It kind of makes it somewhat easy that you can't clash hit him, and that he can't clash you, but at the same time it's annoying because he, you can't knock him down. I mean, he's wielding the bonus type weapon for Zila Handers, and he's easily the worst kind of enemy you could ever fight with Sinkfried and Nightmare. Just wanting my attention now, even in the future. I do end up unlocking the scene purely by accident. I did not expect running into a pirate raid this quickly. This is another one of the cutscenes if you if you aren't familiar. We had the I mean, there's the tier one I showed up in the last playthrough, along with the Zosselmel one, and then there's this one. There's a few others if I remember correctly, but this is one I just totally forgot to exist. Because it's it's such a rarity to unlock. You really have to go out of your way to get this one. But basically, yeah, Cervantes decides to fuck you over with a screw attack. 
Cervantes was another character I got really into when I started playing 2 and 3. Because he's just very easy for the barraging kind of characters. Think of him as like a gangster of a machine gun. It's very easy for him to hit something. Hit it good? Not really, but hit something almost certainly will hit something. Anyway, Lake, Col Lake Side Coliseum. I'm still not sure about this, but if I remember correctly, unlocking this late on can increase your chances of getting into the la into the maze. Labyrinth maze, whatever. Now, if you unlock this early, then there's no chance you'll get in it. So if you like fighting rock early, that's on you. But you like get this light, there's a good chance you can unlock the maze. For long, I don't mean to offend some fans. Yes, I did play the younger and older games, but I had for the longest time forgotten who Rock was. I'm sorry. He was never, uh, never a type of character I wanted to play with at all in the other games. And by the time I had run into a style similar to him, it was Astaroth. And I had almost assumed, oh, he's ripping off Astaroth. No, it's the other way around, guys. Astaroth stole his style from him. I, I don't play either of them, dang. I never could. My brother-in-law loves playing Astaroth and Rock. But I could never get them played well. They're too rough. I'm more of a fast hitter, and I like to be very nimble in my movements, hence the reason I like to either break them down with, like, sink freight or something, or, or like, get efficient kills with Raphael. Anyway, we, we unlock the labyrinth, much to my joy. Because, as I said before, it is very hard to get into this thing. It's not a guarantee, no matter what character you're choosing. Okay, you might have noticed that my past cell pointed out the episode count. This is due to how the Labyrinth is built. When you first unlock and get into it, the number of episodes you're on will determine how long you're in there and how long you need to keep going before you reach the end of the maze. Basically, you lose enough times or not get absolute perfects on every round, you will get tossed out extremely quickly. Whether by loses, you giving up, or just flat out not fucking caring anymore. <sighs> I'm serious. Characters will actively say, this place is pointless, let's get the fuck out. So it's very hard to stay in here, even though it's also hard to get, find this place. Obviously. But since I'm on episode 8, I sh should get at least some way in here. And what happens if you get thrown out, it basically continues your original story where it would have been at that point in the episode. Like, for example, usually around episode 9 or 10, you would have reached the, you would have reached, uh, the cathedral. And by the, one of those points, you would either be trapped in the cage, fight Siegfried or Nightmare, or fight Zoslamel. So, like, say, if I exited out at chapter 9, I mean, sorry, episode 9, which is directly after this one, 
I'd be fighting Sinkford in Nightmare, maybe. Or encountering the cage. If I dropped out at, say, episode 10, then I would fight Zoslamel or maybe Abyss. Basically, think of it like a detour, only when you get out, you've missed, like, several episodes of a TV show, basically. It's like, where the fuck is this? What the fuck happened here? Oh, you were busy doing something else. What's the best example? Oh, it's like an anime filler moment. Like, anyone watched Bleach? Yeah, it's like one of those moments where the filler was just horribly placed. I mean, Ichigo's about to finish off Green Gel. Let's stop this to fight ninjas now. Or was it the other way around? Yeah, it was ninjas first. Then uh, later on, we stopped Okiara's battle to f suddenly fight Soul Swords. That, that was weird. But basically, that's how the lab Labyrinth treats you. It treats you like a filler moment. It's fun to go through, and there's plenty of things you can unlock. Because one really cool thing about this is in normal storyline mode, you can you have a set amount of episodes. Sometimes it's 10, sometimes it's 11, but at most it's going to be as 13. I think 13 for sure is like the ultra nightmare form. But with Labyrinth, it can go way beyond 13. 14, 15, 16, even 20 episodes. And the more episodes you unlock, the more money you get at the end. There's even a chance to fight Okadan if you get to the very end of the maze without getting a single fail. Also, make sure no... I mean, sorry, let me rephrase that. Make sure you get absolute perfects, too. Now, Keelikal says right here, maybe we should explore further. I do get to explore further. And we even get to fight a really cool character. And by really cool, I mean very broken in this game. I mean painfully broken in this game. I don't know what just happened with that flash just now. I'll have to check that up in the edited ver next edit. But anyway, if any of you are familiar with 3 and its characters, Raphael is the most busted character in Soul Calibur 3. Why? Because it is so hard to get out of his attack chains. You can flat out mutilate the enemy with this character. Yeah, it's easy enough to dodge him, but you get caught in his chains and he will rip you apart. His attack chains. It's mostly due to how Soul Calibur's attack range is designed. There, it's designed on wavelengths rather than two and four's uh, direct attacks. And since Raphael's whole attack is a fucking big ass wave, it's very easy to get caught in his chains. Now, yes, I did get a perfect right there. But that was not my first battle of him. And my previous battle you saw was no perfects at all. So here's what's going to happen suddenly. Just watch. I'm all thinking, maybe I'll get another episode in. Maybe I'll go a little bit further. Maybe I'll win the lottery. I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't mind winning the lottery. I'm fucking piss-ass poor. Piss poor. Anyway. So, I get tossed out of the maze. At first, it's me thinking at random. Now, thinking about it now, though, it's very clear because I didn't get any perfects until the last moment. I have to get perfects every single time and just do overall well with hidden bonuses that aren't told to you directly. And like I said, once you get tossed out, it starts you at a different point in the story. Had we got tossed out earlier, we would have saw the fight between Nightmare and Siegfried. Instead, we get slotted right into a battle with Zoslamel.
which we kick his ass. Now, yes, he did just spit out Soul Calibur at us. Why? Because he destroys our weapon. It treats us as wielding a base weapon. So, we picking up Soul Calibur is not going to matter, even though we're right back with Soul Calibur again. If we had chose like a normal weapon, we'd reach this final battle wielding Soul Calibur. It's also the way to unlock Soul Calibur for him. Plus, I just love the way Soul Calibur looks with his... For fans confused, Soul Calibur and Soul Edge are shape-shifting weapons. Yes, they have base cannon forms in-game, with Soul Edge being currently cannon nightmare. And Soul Calibur cannon being Zhongwa. Sorry, Zhang Wai. I can't, I can't say her name suddenly. Oh. Her. But they can shape shift into whatever shape you want. You really want to unlock the Soul Calibur weapons first before unlocking the Soul Edge weapons? Not everyone has a variant of them, but they can have a variant of at least one of them. But the Soul Calibur weapons are better because they almost all have a healing effect to them. And thus I totally messed this one up. This ending credit had two possibilities, obviously. I got the bad ending. The good ending was him catching her and possibly kissing her. Really cute. The bad ending is is Maxie showing up to play backup boyfriend for her. <laughs> he is the backup boyfriend. It's obvious by a massive fucking mile and it's painful. <laughs> 